Now kind of shifting topics here. I want to go to the, the vice president pick for Tim Waltz, the Minnesota governor. Kamala picked him to be the vice president, vice presidential candidate, excuse me, on the Democratic ticket. And I found something interesting. Someone sent me this this morning about how he had a, it was a while ago, but he basically was uh, driving while intoxicated. And I think he was running from the police or whatever. And then by the time the lights came on, he was doing like 95 and a 55 and he finally pulled over whatever. It was a 93, it was a 90 something. So I thought it was wild, but after everything was said and done, all he got was a, a reckless driving conviction. And I don't know if he had any other convictions of anything, you know, of that nature growing up, but just the fact that he has it on his record and no one's really, no one has talked about it, I think. At least, you know, he's a Minnesota governor, so here in the South, I probably wouldn't have heard about it anyway. But I just find it interesting that he's now going to be the VP candidate for the Democratic Party. And then when you look on the Republican side, you have Donald Trump, who literally just got convicted of 34 counts. He's literally a convicted felon now. And he's running for the president of the United States. Now, a lot of people can't vote for the president of the United States because they are convicted felons, but a convicted felon can run for president. And say what you will, whether you're a Trump supporter or not, it's just so hypocritical that this party has always seen, I feel like, criminals, especially criminals of a different background, whether that's color or gender identification or whatever, they're always trying to bring them down. And yet, you're like, okay, let's go ahead and make this guy the president after he's been convicted. And now, whether you want to call it a false conviction or whatever, according to the U.S. justice system, he's a convicted felon. So he was doing things that he knew were illegal. And now we're just like, oh, it's okay. We still want you, we still want you to be the president. That's just, it's baffling to me. And it's also sad because... The hypocrisy in America really just, it can make your skin crawl if you're paying attention or if you care, because there are so many people who have been convicted by police. You think of a George Floyd or a Sandra Bland or heck, anybody else who's been shot and killed by the police for basically just being who they are. And then you have other people who can be convicted of felonies and convicted for felonies in their home state, by the way, and be basically the next president of the United States for a second term after they lost in between their first term and their possible second term. And that's just so, that's so American to me. It's just so, so American. So it just, it's sad, but it's also funny the more I talk about it. It's just, it's wild. And when you're used to being, especially uh, black in America, it just, there's always something, you know what I mean? It's always one of those things where you see things happen and you're like, yep, that's my country. <laughs> so we'll see what happens if he actually wins. But I mean, again, this is why I see an independent choice so crucial because we're always choosing between professionals, like professional politicians, not people who actually care about the country. And it's not just in America, it's, it's all over the world.